I rise today in my last floor speech in this body to do what I was sworn to do on the first day, to protect and defend the Constitution. President Trump put the domestic terrorists on notice by saying, stand back and stand by. He then summoned them to D.C., directed them to march on the Capitol, and then he sat back and watched the insurrection. Some of my colleagues, some of which may well be co-conspirators, in their latest attempt to placate and please this unfit president, suggest that we shouldn't punish Trump for his actions in order to unify the country. That is the climax of foolishness. Let me suggest to them, stand up, man up, woman up, and defend this Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, including Donald J. Trump. In the first impeachment, Republicans said we didn't need to impeach him because he learned his lesson, so no need to remove him. Well, we said if we didn't remove him, he would do it again. Gentlemen's time has expired. Simply put, we told you so. The gentleman's time has expired. Richmond out. I reserve. The gentleman from New York reserves. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized. You all are white males. You never lived in my shoes, and you do not know what it's like to be an African-American male. Who in the hell the you, gentleman you are? Mr. Chairman, let me just start by saying I am absolutely sitting here offended and angry as hell. And I want to explain to my, what we always say is how we refer to each other, my good friends on the other side. By the time I'm finished, you will be clear that we are not good friends. As a black male who went to the fifth best public high school in the country, who was a victim of excessive force, who has a black son, who has worries that you all don't. And to my colleagues, especially the ones that keep introducing amendments that are a tangent and a distraction from what we're talking about, you all are white males, you never lived in my shoes, and you do not know what it's like to be an African-American male. And all I'm saying is, if you are opposed to this legislation, let's just have the vote. But please do not come in this committee room and make a mockery of the pain that exists in my community. And it reminds me of the argument about the 1964 Voting uh, Civil Rights Act or the 65 Voting Rights Act, where 126 people voted against a Civil Rights Act, 85 people against a Voting Rights Act, because they had all these side issues. Either man up and say you don't believe in it, or let's talk about the real issue. And yes, we're not interested in watered-down version of this bill. I'm not interested in equality with all deliberate speed. This is a crisis. People are losing their lives. So if we have other things that we want to fix, then fix them in another bill, fix them at another time. But people are dying as we talk. So I am not interested in moving at a snail's pace. I am not interested in a watered-down bill that mandates nothing. I'm not interested in studying Antifa. I'm not even interested in studying the Klan or sovereign citizens right now because that is not the imminent threat that black men face on a daily basis. And right now, too often, it is law enforcement, those who were sworn to protect and to serve. And so all we're asking today is to deal with that. I don't mind dealing with other pieces of legislation. I don't mind dealing with other issues that you all may have. And, and what I don't want to leave this conversation with and why I'm speaking now instead of later is because I don't want you all to leave here saying, well, we didn't know. We didn't know that's how you felt, Cedric. I wanted to be crystal clear, and I will give you the benefit of the doubt that it is an unconscious bias that I'm hearing, because at worst, it's conscious bias, and that I would hate to assume from any of the people on the other side. Will the gentleman yield? Sure. I appreciate your passion. Are you suggesting that you're certain that none of us have non-white children? 
Be because you, you reflected on your black son and you said none of us could understand. Man, man, stop. I'm not about to get sidetracked about the color of our children. We're talking no, about said, black kids. So I reclaim my time. You said that I reclaimed my time. I but know. You want the discussion? I know the that gentleman, you want to build? gentleman reclaimed his time. I said I claim, reclaimed my time. I already know that there are people on the other side that have uh, black grandchildren. It is not about the color of your kids. It is about black males, black people in the streets How do that are getting killed. And if are? one of them happens to be your kid, I'm concerned about him too. And clearly, I'm more concerned about him than you are. So, so let's be clear you're, about you're that. Claiming, so you're claiming you're I more am, concerned for my family than I do? Who in the hell the you gentleman, you are? The gentleman, if the, the shoe gentleman, fits. Listen, you don't know how much we care about will our families. Kick this dog is outrageous. Holler. You should take those words down. The I know gentleman you care will about your family and love your family. The gentleman week, will suspend. The gentleman will suspend. The time belongs to the gentleman from Louisiana. Cedric, would you yield? Was, was that a nerve? Yeah, uh, you did. I yield right to the nerve. gentleman from Louisiana. I, I say this honestly. I appreciate you yielding. You are my good friend, and we hail from the same state, and I respect you, and I love you. And I, I, I say this honestly: if all that you said is true, and I believe it is, then why didn't the Democrats allow us to assist with this? Why draft a bill in the dark of night in a back room somewhere and then present it to us whole cloth? If you really wanted us to work together, and we want to, why not give us that opportunity? Do you have an answer for that? You know, I do have an answer for that, because. You all were in charge for a while. We've been in charge for a while. I have been singing this same song since 1991. People on the streets right now are demanding action right now. We saw what was just presented in the Senate. It was a watered-down bill, and right now this is a national crisis. And we don't want to move with all deliberate speed. So those ideas that are good, we are willing to meet and to talk about. And the author of the bill, Ms. Bass... Congresswoman Bass has indicated willingness to continue to work as we go forward. But as of right now, this is a critical emergency for people in this country. And I just think that we should not debate everything from Flynn to all this other stuff. We know what we're talking about. In the here. Time of the Let's vote it up or down. The time of the gentleman has expired. For what purpose does Ms. Lesko...